Good morning and welcome back. Here again with my neighbor Mike, or former neighbor I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and well, he's here to help me wrap up the last few questions of this uh, January challenge. And well, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Is it more or less difficult to be successful in the modern world than it was in the past, whether it was 10, 50, 100, or 1,000 years ago? Mm. So many of these questions, it's like both. I mean, if you want to talk about famous as far as a celebrity, most obviously, I would say today, you know, here we are. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but see, it said successful. So fame is what I'm going for. I am far from su f successful. It's actually harder now than it was five years ago, just from market saturation. Right, right, right. But still comparatively, what would you be doing 30 years ago? True. Toiling in your basement with no audience. I think there is a golden age and it, it happens in cycles, but there's a golden age for each discipline, almost. Sports, YouTube, news, movies, are these venues? Is this what yes. you're saying? Okay. And it's right when it's in the first 20 years, maybe even the first 15, anything happens. That's when the gods are born, and then it becomes saturated. Like, People still talk about Babe Ruth. If you looked at him statistically... Today, he probably wouldn't have even made it. He sucks. Overweight, smoked cigars all the time. Terrible. But Babe Ruth. You yeah. know, uh, right when basketball was starting to get big, you had Michael Jordan. That's not saying that he isn't great, and his stats are pretty impressive. But there's a golden age for each discipline and it comes in cycles and I think that's not only due to the saturation but also the general consciousness of attention yeah um, you know there was a golden age of rail and the people who were there at that specific time and had the means to hit things in that golden age were madly successful and even people with more incredible means 10 years after that couldn't get a foot in the door and it's it's that way for every discipline i believe every different thing has its own golden age and it, it's got to be cyclical yeah that's the one part about golden age that wasn't sitting well with me the thought that if you missed the one good spot it was never coming back no it'll come back around and it'll be evolved and people will be looking for something a little different but there will be another chance to succeed yeah even in a saturated market. If you look at, one of my favorites is architecture. If you go back throughout history, there's like 200 golden ages of architecture. Mm -hmm. And it's with, you know, the society, it's everyone gets turned on to this new standard of beauty for whatever reason. And there's a few people out there that nail it and they become gods even though people five years later are doing things either the same or better they're just schmucks they're not as good as that guy well yeah because by then it's a algorithm creating something innovative in that style is impossible the greats the gods have already done it so all you can do is copy their work and at least on the outside that's there's probably an easy way to do it you yeah know, like a formula that and even if it's your 20% better doesn't matter and you can't be successful in it even if you're better not really successful unless you have your own fresh angle on it that that really is this really is a yes and no question it really de yeah depends on what craft you're talking about what decade you're born in and how you measure success like yeah. if fame is the thing there are plenty of people on YouTube who are famous who haven't monetized, who are just famous, but they're not rich, they're not successful, if you consider wealth success. Yeah, it's crazy, kind of. Yeah, it's hard to figure out. It's hard to pinpoint what real success is. Not only that, it's hard to 
regardless of what your idea of success is, this is such a, almost a random set because for each person, they have a different discipline. Like your thing is not my thing. My thing was better five years ago. Your thing is better, is going to be better in three weeks. Get prepared. Or it was better 10 years ago. And you can't let your, one thing that people always do, and this kills me, um, is they look at the past through a modern lens and rose tinted goggles at the same time. You could have been wildly successful if you were alive 100 years ago, you know, with the Vanderbilts, because you can see exactly what they did now. Right, right. But 100 right. years ago, they were. No one saw that coming. Then. They were thinking 10 years ahead of everyone else and no one saw it and they had the means and the intelligence to seize an opportunity that if you look back on it now well I could have done that well yeah with the knowledge that they that they didn't have they made up that knowledge and now we have it in our consciousness and yeah. that it's so easy to, to, to look at things like that do you think the if the average man was had that intelligence and that in those means do you think they the Vanderbilts would have been the only ones there would have been a thousand. Yeah, yeah. But then again, also, the Vanderbilts wouldn't been, have been as staunch in your mind because it would have been saturated with names. There is an awful lot also of uh, right place, right time. Uh, it's not just that the Vanderbilts, in this case, were especially intelligent. How many people of means were in the right area with enough time on their hands and functional capital to even test those ideas. So if I put Joe Schmo in that position, maybe he does come up with that idea and makes money off it. Like, uh, I don't remember what book it was, but I read a book that said that Bill Gates, if you look at Bill Gates under the right light, you could say that he was inevitable. Or if it wasn't him, it would have been his next door neighbor. Like, someone from his area was going to be a computer icon. Because the whole reason he got his start was because a college started a computer program and a free program for kids to learn about computers. And he lived right next to the college. And that's where he got his hands on his first computer. That's where he started developing some of the stuff he did with some of the other people in that room. Well, you put me there. I don't know. Maybe. You know, maybe, or, or anybody. You put anybody there, there's nothing there to do that summer, but hey, that's something that's available. Right place, right time. Yeah, so it's it's hard to answer this question because it's easy to look back on... Yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. So, I, I don't know if I can really answer that question truthfully, even with my gold cyclical golden age idea um i've never seen someone with a quotient of over 90 percent no quit in them who didn't eventually find success it's those who try twice and give up who think they did it well enough that the world should have met them halfway after their second attempt, who don't succeed. Timing has little to do with it. Even in a saturated market, I believe a great idea will still rise to the top. Well, like, uh, uh, what's his face said? Uh, mm. uh, like Edison said, genius is 99% perspiration. Totally it, it, believable. It's only 1% being inspired, and it's getting your ass out there and working harder than everyone else. Yes. Um, I know uh, one of my one of the guys I watch. Uh, I actually I'm subbed to him on this channel. So if you look through him through my channel, you can find him. Roberto Blake. He primarily does like Photoshop things, and he's a graphic designer. And he talks about business a lot. Mm -hmm. However, he's also he does a lot of YouTube Q and A's and stuff. And he even says now, 
yes, the market is saturated. It, you know, you have such a high bar for entry, but everyone has a smartphone. So there's no excuse other than you're too lazy to make it. And at the core of that, it's 1%, 99%. How many other people put in that many hours as he did? Yeah. So they don't deserve to oh, be he where works he's like at. A, he works like a dog. But look at his channel. Look at what he does. He's definitely successful. The older I get, the more that 10,000 hours to master a skill seems really obvious and true. I, I can't. I can't say I have personal experience with that. I don't know what I could have put ten thousand dollars, ten thousand hours into exactly, but that makes so much sense. Yeah, the places you'll be and the places you won't be will dictate your success. How many hours you spent on your skill? Not only were those hours practicing; those were hours you you weren't diminishing your resources. Those are hours that you weren't allowing your head to fill with new distractions. Success is inevitable if you just keep going. I really yeah. believe that. I know playing the cello, uh, for me, that, you know, two, three hours a day, five days a week, and maybe an hour on, on the weekends by right, myself right. for eight years. It's inevitable to get better. And if I had somehow found a group in college to go you know get with i think it would have been just even your life could have gone that way yeah i don't think this area has the capacity to go that way but if it had started that way i would have probably changed my area to match my interest which would have like you said if that's what i'm gearing myself towards then just the fact of me gearing towards that would have forced me to go to an area to find those people, which would have put me in that right place, which would have pushed me even further along that path. And with those people, more hours, more practicing, more this, more that. I mean, I never would have gotten into woodworking or YouTube, or maybe I would have gotten into YouTube mm. as just a means to practice and watch myself and blah, blah, blah. I would have kept ratcheting, ratcheting on that direction. You are what you do all the time. I forget who said that, but I like that. It's right. You're not a fitness guru because you did yoga once. You're in shape because you do yoga every day. Yeah, it's a part of your life. I'm great at designing things because I do that every day. <laughs> Yeah, it's not just uh, it's not just talent. It actually takes uh, luck is when opportunity meets preparation. So I guess the moral: pay attention to what you spend the most time on, because that's where your life is headed. Yeah, re well, really. But well, you know, I don't think I can even say that, because in high school I was spending almost all of my time playing the cello, working out, and, and swimming and then in drama clubs. And I say, even though you didn't end up with those particular hobbies, the discipline and what is important to you when you're doing all those activities flavors your life to this day. In which respect? All respects. The things that you were exposed to and not exposed to. The ideas, the people. That theater club probably had more to do with this YouTube than you'd probably think. Like, it gave you an appreciation for art, or it, 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 in your mind, gave greater value to projects like this, where other people don't even see an upside at all. It's only because of all the things you've experienced do you value what you value. You're a product of your experiences. Yeah. And DNA. So, guys, thanks for watching. This... This month has been awesome for me. It's taught me so many things about myself, even tonight. Uh, the only reason I shot these last two questions with uh, Mike here is some of the data got corrupted from my conversations with my dad. And that forced me to you know, figure out a workaround immediately instead of just saying, well, you know, I gave it, I gave it the college try. Uh, it forced me to use the program 
that I, that I used, which is Mo Mo Windows Movie Maker, in a completely different style than I had been. Everything, all these, all, all my videos up to that point were bespoke videos, one of a kind, crafted just for that topic. And this is more of a production thing for me. So it, it changed my whole thinking on a lot of things on the back end, uh, on the things that you guys don't even see. And I think that's a beautiful thing. This has been one of the coolest challenges I've done because it's been such a long haul type thing. And it's not a challenge just for me. Involving many, many, many people. Uh, my ex-girlfriend, Brittany, my fiance, my former neighbor here, my father, which by extension was also my mother. And you know, the two dogs and you know, my, my, my nephew who is in the next room and he's kind of confused by the whole thing and <laughs> he's four years old. It's such a cool encompassing thing and I am so glad you guys came along for the ride. For the 31st, I'll be doing a wrap up video for this whole thing. So if you have any questions that you really want me to, to hit on, let me know in the comment section below. I really want to hear your input because this has just been such a cool experience for me. Not just the philosophy, because, you know, when Mike was living upstairs, this is what we did all the time. <laughs> yeah, just minus the camera. Yeah, hours and hours <laughs> and hours spent just talking about stuff. But this whole experience has been awesome. So, really, thanks for coming along, guys. I really appreciate it. It's cool. It really is cool. And if you haven't yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, from here on out, I'm releasing new content every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mainly this Monday's Philosophy Wednesday and Project Fridays. And there's a good chance I'm going to be changing those around for the phonetics of it, like uh, Ray suggested. So hit that subscribe button and join me. Also, if you haven't yet and you're able to, please hit up my Patreon. I hate beg begging for money, but I almost feel like I have to at this point because YouTube is kicking me out of the AdSense program. If you guys have a buck a month, that would be awesome. If you don't, really, no pressure, but if you can, thank you. Thanks for watching, guys. Pay attention. Be mindful. Subscribe! <laughs> you heard the man, guys. <laughs> See you later.